Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon and good evening based on wherever you live. Welcome back to my channel. Today we will be continuing our Salesforce interview question series and this is the part 7 video where I will be discussing Sales Cloud. Okay, so let's get started. So the very first question in sales cloud is what is sales cloud, right? Let's see what is sales cloud. So sales cloud uh, refers to the sales module in Salesforce CRM. It includes, we have multiple different modules like sales, service, marketing, this, that, right? So the sales module is nothing but the sales cloud. It includes leads, contacts, accounts, contacts, contracts, opportunities, products, price books, quotes, and campaign. It include features such as web to lead to get the online lead from the website, like nothing but a company website, and then lead response rules and lead assignment rules. It is designed to be start to end setup for the entire sales process. So the companies use this to help generate a revenue, okay? In future questions, we'll, uh, we'll go in detail of all, all these things. Next question is what is the difference between sales cloud and sales cloud automation, right? So sales cloud uh, includes leads, accounts, contacts, contracts, okay, opportunities, products, price books, quotes, and campaigns, right? These, these are all the different objects we have, okay? You can create a lead, you can create an account, you can create a contacts, contracts, and opportunities, everything, right? But what is automation, right? Anything which automates this process is nothing but, you know, sales cloud automation, right? Uh, the very first thing in our automation is uh, web to lead, right? So web to lead is nothing but uh, like I have a company and I have a website, right? Uh, people will go to my website and then uh, if they're interested in some product, they will enter their details and submit, right? So that is nothing but uh, web to lead. So as soon as... Uh, a customer submits it gets into salesforce system right so the process to configure the data coming in from a website to into the salesforce is nothing but web to lead right similarly we have auto response rules so whenever we receive a lead from the user or from a customer then we have to respond to the lead with some message right that is hand that can be handled using a lead auto response rule and then lead auto assignments so if lead comes into our company, that means that someone has to take care of that lead, right? So automatically we can assign the leads to uh, to the sales uh, staff, right? So that can be handled using uh, lead auto assignment rules. Lead process, right? So every company have their own process. What should happen when the lead comes in and then what should happen? And then until the lead becomes a customer, we have every company have different processes. So how we can configure this uh, process is being discussed in or is part of the lead process. And obviously organization wide email is nothing but a default email, which uh, we can send uh, uh, whenever we want to send an email to the customers. Okay. Next question is what is a lead, right? So lead is nothing but the information of a prospect customer and he or she is not yet customer, right? So very first information you receive about some customer is nothing but a lead, right? You might be, you know, as a salesperson, you might be visiting uh, someone and they have uh, given you the information. Maybe they share the card, right? So they will, the salesperson will come and enter the details into a uh, Salesforce system. There's nothing but a lead. But, you know, till this time, even customer has not decided that whether he will buy something or not. It's just the first information sharing of the person who is interested in our product. Or maybe uh, you went into a conference, someone someone meet you. I mean, you went uh, in a conference as a salesperson and someone meet you and, and uh, you know, you have explained about your product and they, they liked it and they, they said, yeah, I am interested in buying your product. So, and then they, they share their information, okay. Uh, we can get connected and here is my card or here is my information. So that very first information about the customer which we receive becomes a lead, right? So these leads, just note that these leads are not yet customer. These are just an, an information of a person. They may become a customer or they may not become a customer, right? So that is important. Let's see what's the next question. How to convert a lead? So 
when we open the lead page, there will be a convert button on it, right? Click on the convert button uh, to convert the lead. So the, the lead is the first information then and, and based on how we are interacting with the customers, if the customers are showing some more uh, some more interest in our product, so we can convert the lead, right? Every company have its own, uh, uh, you know, this thing, uh, basis when we should convert the lead, right? So we when when we think that okay this can this uh, this uh, customer is more interested in on our product then the company goes and you know converts the lead okay uh, this is the button uh, of convert when we click on the, when we are on the lead page and then we convert and then it converts to to something let's see what is that something so what happens when the lead is converted or what is the lead conversion process, right? So what will happen when we hit that convert button, right? So let's see what will happen. When a lead is converted, the three things happen. It will create an opportunity, right? It will create an account and it will also create a contact. So three things will be created. Opportunity will have the details of, uh, you know, what products uh, this customer wants to purchase from us. An account is nothing but the name of the company for which wants to purchase things from us, right? And contact is the contact person from that company, okay? Uh, who who is interested in uh, you know buying the products from us, okay? So that is nothing but uh, a contact. So note if the same account and contact already exist, then the system will allow the opportunity to associate with existing contact and account. Okay, so here is another scenario. Uh, this this con this company is already purchasing something from me, right? Me, me as in I have a company and I'm selling some products. So this company is already purchasing some products from me, right? And now they want to order some more thing, right? Uh, or, or maybe an, another person, uh, another salesperson from another division uh, contacted uh, uh, me, right, You to, to buy, uh, something maybe let's say for example I'm selling uh, computers and printers and all those things right so another uh, person uh, from another division contacted me right and because this account is already available what I can do is when I'm, I'm converting the opportunity I can associate uh, this opportunity with with this account as well as if the same person is uh, uh, you know again inquiring they can uh, then even while converting I can uh, associate that uh, contact with uh, while converting the lead okay so let's see how it does so while when we click on that convert button we have these options right to create a new account or create a new contact and create an opportunity as well as we can choose from existing right here we have existing if if this is the same person from the company which we are already dealing with then you can go ahead and search that uh, company and uh, con uh, and add here similarly if it is the same contact who is uh, who is already existing uh, in our contacts, you can choose from there as well, right? And uh, yeah, opportunity, we, we normally we we create a new opportunity, okay? So it's, it's unchecked, okay? So yeah, this is the screen where, we, you know, when we click on the convert button, we have this multiple options, okay? Let's go ahead and see what's next. What is the lead process in Salesforce? As I said, uh, you know, every company have its own process. Uh, we have to configure the process, like what should happen from uh, uh, from starting to end. How many steps are there uh, from the lead comes into our sales system and then to convert it into uh, a customer, right? So a lead process allows us to define or organize status values or stages, like how many stages we have, okay? Uh, multiple different companies can have multiple different stages based on the businesses also. Like, for example, I'm a bank right if someone is inquiring uh, for uh, for a uh, for home loan right so i can have multiple different stages right like this okay first one is new and then open not contacted like in progress i'm talking with the person and then working contacted and close not converted and then finally converted okay what is a campaign Campaigns are run by companies to generate leads or businesses, right? All the information regarding the campaign planning and execution can be captured in the campaigns. So maybe you might have seen, uh, uh, you know, towards any festival, right? Just a few days before the festivals or maybe New Year or maybe let's say, you know, Christmas time, people 
give a lot of offers, right? Year end offer or maybe new year offer, something like that, right? Those are nothing but the campaign, campaigns, right? The, the main idea of campaign is to generate some revenue, right? So they give you a huge discount, right? And then, uh, uh, and then try to sell things and then generate a lot of revenue, right? So all the information regarding the campaigns can be captured in the campaign. And we can, we can also see like, you know, for how many people's, uh, people we have reached out uh, uh, for this campaign and how much uh, successful this campaign is from, for, for example, if I've reached out to, to 100 people uh, with this campaign and, you know, let's say, suppose 80% of the people have responded back uh, to me on this campaign and maybe, you know, 50% people purchase the products for this campaign. So we can see all those information uh, in the campaign. Okay. How many types of accounts are there in Salesforce? This is really important one. Okay. Let's see. There are two types of accounts in Salesforce. First one is a regular account. Normally when you, whatever you do, right, we practice is nothing but a regular account, is nothing but the business accounts. Okay, we don't refer it as a business account. We just refer it as an account, but these are for businesses, okay? And there is another, uh, this thing called person account, right? I, I'll give you more detail about this uh, in the future, uh, this thing, but normally companies deal with two type of customers. First one is B2B, means in the sense, I am a business and I'm dealing with another business, okay? For example, I am a Dell company, I am selling, uh, laptops to some construction company, right? So both are businesses, right? And there is another another uh, scenario, like I am, a, let's say, for example, telecom provider, right? And I'm, and I'm uh, giving the, you know, mobile uh, packages to the normal household customers, right? So person, we, if you're dealing with directly with the person, those are nothing but, uh, you know, person accounts, right? And uh, if you're dealing with the business, uh, we, uh, refer it to as a business account or or normally normal account as well. So by default, Salesforce give you the business account, not the person account, right? So this is what I mentioned. By default, a person account is not enabled in Salesforce. We should create a Salesforce support ticket to enable a person account. Okay? Can we have a both a regular account and person account in an or? Yes, we can have both the accounts in the, at a time in an org. Okay. Uh, as far as I remember, if you enable the person account, you cannot disable that. Okay. You have to be really careful before even requesting that you to enable the person account. How to differentiate between a regular account and a person account. Okay. So as soon as we enable person account, there is a record type created for account and it will have two options, account as well as person account. Okay. What is the difference between a regular account and a person account? Here we'll, we'll see differences in more detail okay a regular account are used for b2b right as i said business to business type of account and person accounts are used for individual customers which are not businesses okay person account will not have a company field okay we when we convert a lead to of a person account it will not create the contact right so person account is not a company right it's just a personal like you and me okay i have uh I have approached a telecom company and, and I said, okay, just give me a postpaid, postpaid SIM to me, right? I'm still a customer, right? But I'm not a company customer. I'm just an individual, right? And the same way, like uh, electricity uh, of your home, right? It will be on someone's name, your father's name or even your name, right? So we are directly customers. We don't have any companies and all those things, right? So that is that is where person account comes into picture. And for that, we even don't need a separate contact because person account itself have the fields which can store some contact information, right? So there is a difference between a regular account as well as a person account. So companies who are regularly dealing with the businesses, they use a business account and the companies like, uh, you know, electricity companies or, or maybe uh, a gas company or uh, a telecom company, right? Or maybe our uh, internet connection, right? So these these will have direct customers uh, uh, with, no, with no company, right? So they have this type of setup called, you know, having a person account, right? So they will have the account details as well as the contact details within the same account, okay? What is a product, okay? It is a standard object which stores all the products a company sells, right? So whatever I'm selling, let's say, for example, I'm a Dell company, I'm selling laptops and different models of laptops. I sell uh, 
maybe servers, I sell printers, right? All the product information can be stored in the product object, right? But the API name, normally if you see account is having API name as account, right? Because it's a standard object. And uh, contact is having an API name as contact, right? But product is having API name product too, because normally when you are new, you try to find product, product, but you don't find, but true product two is the actual API name of, uh, of a product, okay? What is a price book, okay? Price book is uh, used to provide different pricing of the same product for different regions or different types of customers, right? For example, let's say, Apple, right? Apple sells uh, iPhone in different uh, regions, okay? Uh, uh, they they have pricing based on uh, even the country, right? You might find uh, it's a little bit cheaper in uh, the US, but it's a little bit uh, uh, costlier in other countries or maybe in India, right? Because India have a uh, lot of uh, taxes, uh, uh, which your US might not have. So they, they try to adjust the taxes and all those things and then give a different uh, uh, pricing, okay, right? Even in a different currency also can be configured in a price book, okay? And uh, not just uh, for, for different countries, uh, let's say I Apple is selling the product direct to the customers as well as to some wholesalers, right? So they have a different price for wholesalers, right? And they can have uh, different prices for retail customers. So that can be configured in a price book, okay? Uh, and for example, a particular product retail cust pro customers can have some price, but wholesale or a regular customer can have a different price, right? For example, sometimes I've seen uh, companies have key accounts, okay? Uh, that means uh, that mean uh, key customers. They do a lot of business with the companies, right? So what they do is they give a special pricing to those type of companies. So all these things can be configured in a price book, okay? What are quotes? Okay, let's see what are quotes. A quote is a negotiated price given to the customer and it will only be valid for some specific period. I've seen a lot of quotes with just, you know, valid for 30 days, okay? So, a quote is nothing but uh, uh, you you are selling some, some, some products to the customer, right? And you send uh, whatever the pricing for that, but they said, okay, but they said, okay, can you give us some discount, right? So maybe you, you negotiate the price with the customers and then give them the final uh, fi final price and, uh, and the customer will agrees to pay, right? So that information can be uh, created and sent to the customer using the quotes, right? By default, quotes are not enabled in Salesforce. Uh, to enable quotes, go to the setup, customize quote settings, and then enable. So you have to enable it in, in Salesforce to use the quotes. Is the default or out of the box functionality sufficient for complex product quotes? Let's see. No, Salesforce out of the box quote functionality is not sufficient for quotes, okay? Because sometimes some companies have very complex product structure, so they might not be able to, uh, we might not be able to use the default quote functionality in Salesforce. Let's say, for example, uh, take an example of Dell itself, right? So you can go and configure your laptop by yourself, right? You select the laptop model and then you select whether you want i5, i7 or i3, right? And then you save and, uh, and then you select what is the model, uh, not model, what is the RAM you want to select, 4GB, 8GB, 16GB, right? And then uh, and what else you can select? Hard disk, right? How much uh, space you want, whether you want 256GB, 500GBs, so based on that, finally, you're coming up with some products. So those kind of uh, complex uh, uh, configuration cannot be done using the normal code, right? Uh, only straightforward, uh, uh, straightforward uh, uh, these things uh, can be created with code. Straightforward products can be created. If you have a simple structure of a co product, we can uh, use the code. Another example, like bundles, right? You cannot, uh, you cannot have bundles in the, in, in the for example, bundle in the sense uh, uh, you have purchased a laptop that, you know, I can provide a bundle of a bundle with a keyboard, mouse, as well as headphones, right? That is nothing but a bundle. So that, that kind of uh, structure cannot be possible with this default codes, okay? How to achieve the complex code functionality in Salesforce? If it is not possible, but how can we achieve if people wants to use it, then how can uh, this be possible at all, right? So 
we can install and use any app exchange cpk products these are very famous products uh, right now uh, uh, companies have a lot of requirements for the people who know cpq uh, cpq products or cpq tools right so we can install and use any of the app exchange cpk products to achieve the complex code functionality okay you'll ask what is cpq right let's see what is cpq CPQ stands for configure price and code. I said, right? If you want to configure the complex products, you cannot do that in Salesforce code. But uh, in, in CPQ, you can configure the products, okay, based on how you want to bundle it or how you want to give the options. Like I said, I've given an example for uh, iPhone, uh, i7, i9, and i5, right? As well as uh, you can give the different prices also, right? You can configure different prices. And then finally, you can quote it. So that needs definitely a CPQ. Standard quote no, is not possible to achieve this, okay? What are the App Exchange apps available for CPQ? So as I said, you can install some App Exchange apps, but what are those apps, okay? You should know this one. So Salesforce CPQ, Salesforce have its own CPQ. They were not having before, but they acquired a company called Steelbrick. Uh, in the year 2016 and they have worked a lot on it and uh, it's a really good product right now and we have another uh, generic cpq uh, aptus okay and a big machine is also acquired by oracle uh, in 2016 and cloud sense it's industry specific cpq and uh, velocity again it's industry specific cpq so what do you mean by uh, industry specific uh, uh, CPQ. So what happens is this CPQ are tailored for some industries. Let's say for example, media company, right? How they want to pro configure the products. It is tailored to them or telecom companies, right? They have also a very complex structure, right? When you go for uh, internet connections and all those things, they have very complex structure uh, based on the products they sell. So there are uh, CPQ products which are configured specifically for the industries, right? Maybe sometimes some CPQ for financial industry or banking, right? So, so these two are uh, very much focused on the industry specific. I'm not sure what are all the industries they cater, but they are industry specific uh, uh, CPQs, okay? What is web to lead in Salesforce? Very good question. So web to lead is an essential Salesforce automation feature. This feature helps companies to capture data submitted by their website visitors and create a lead in the Salesforce. So what happens is uh, Bob, like he visits a company called ABC Companies, right? And he opens the website of that uh, ABC company, right? So for any products, if we have given uh, a button called contact us, uh, if you want to you know, buy products or something, then they click on that contact us button and then they'll have uh, the options to enter the, their name, email address and phone numbers and then he'll click uh, that button called submit, right? So what it is doing, he is not in the Salesforce at all. He is on the website of the customer, right? As soon as it submits from that website, the data comes into Salesforce, right? That feature is nothing but the web to lead feature in Salesforce, okay? What is lead auto, uh, lead auto assignment role, right? As I said before, uh, Let's see, lead auto assignment rule automatically assign leads to the appropriate lead owner, okay? Based on the assignment rule, okay? Owner of the record can be either a user or a queue, okay? This is very important. It cannot be a group, cannot be a owner of the lead. Only it can be a user or a queue, okay? Lead auto assignment rule consists of multiple criteria, right? There can be only one active rule at a time for lead. You just open and go to the lead assignment role from the setup and see what uh, do I mean by this only one active rule criteria. So we can activate only one at a time, okay? So what is the best example for this one uh, is, uh, let's say again, I am a company uh, wherein I sell multiple uh, products like a Dell company, right? Dell sell laptops, Dell sell uh, uh, servers, Dell sell, uh, printers as well, right? So and even uh, because Dell is a so big company, they have a dedicated uh, teams for selling just the laptops, okay? And dedicated teams just to sell the, the servers and dedicated sales teams to just to sell the printers. Let, let's suppose, okay? Yeah, it happens also. So what happens is uh, when, the, when a customer 
opens the website and submit the details of uh, of their right and then they will also select which which type of product they are interested in okay so let's suppose if they say okay we are interested in uh in, in the laptop so what automatically lead assignment rule does is it automatically assign the that particular lead th that will first create the lead and then assign that particular lead to the sales team who are responsible for taking care of laptop sales okay similarly as a customer log uh, opens the website and oh, enter their contact details and select the product as server then automatically lead auto assignment rules assign that lead to the team or i would should say sales team who is responsible for selling the servers okay here is the same thing i have explained so bob submits his details on the contact as page of a company abc company and selected product as the hardware the lead auto assignment rule automatically assigns the uh, the created lead to the hardware team's queue okay if Harry submits his detail on the contact us page of ABC company and selected product as software then lead auto assignment rule can automatically assign the created lead to the software teams okay this is how it works what is the lead auto response rule so lead auto response rule is to send automated responses based on any attribute of any incoming lead right there can be only one active rule or at a time uh there can only be one uh active rule at a time for lead okay example when bob submits his uh, details on the contact us page of abc company then he will receive an email confirming his details are received by the company this is the simple one okay that's it for today thank you so much and thanks for watching this video i hope this video help you prepare for the salesforce interview questions and crack your next job right if you like uh, this video make sure you hit and like uh, and subscribe to my channel right now that way you don't miss uh, out salesforce interview question and answer videos like this one right and uh, if you want to read more uh, salesforce interview questions head to my blog uh, uh, you can uh, read the questions there as well i will add the uh, link in the chat below thank you